Hey guys, this is Game Advisor, and welcome back to another Icarus video. Today, we're going to be talking about all the talents in the game, which ones are good, which ones are bad, and just kind of giving you guys a general idea as to what we would recommend when building your character. Of course, with the new talent respec implemented, a lot of you may be wanting to respec, so that's kind of why we thought about making this video. With that being said, let's get started. Now it is worth noting that this video is not going to cover necessarily a specific build that you should have, but rather it's going to give you an idea as to what are good talents to look for and what are talents that you want to ignore. So with that, let's start in the survival section. The survival section of the talent tree is going to have your resources, exploration, hunting, and cooking, and farming. So in the resources section, we really only have one absolutely god tier talent that I would highly recommend you pick up, and that's going to be wood breakdown. However, in order to get wood breakdown you need to understand how to get these higher tier talents which is actually very simple all you're going to do is put talents and things that don't have these little symbols next to them in order to unlock the talents that do have the symbols in them i believe it's four talents of the previous tier or just in general in the tree to unlock the following ones so to get these little private rank symbol talents you're going to have to put four points in non-private rank ones and then to get to the corporal or sergeant whatever you would want to call them these next tier up you're going to have to then go ahead and get the private private or the non-private ranked ones, just anywhere in the tree that you can put them in, to eight, and then you'll be able to get to these, and so on and so forth, until you get to the final rank, which will allow you to get all of the ones at the bottom. This may change in the future, but it's just something worth noting in case you didn't know how that works. Otherwise, the reason we care so much about wood breakdown is simply because it unlocks the ability to turn regular wood into sticks, and the ratio is one log to ten sticks, and if you know anything about this game, you probably know you're going to have to craft a a lot of things with sticks like tree sap, arrows, all sorts of other different things, and therefore you're going to need an absolute metric ton of them. You can gather sticks by hand, yes, but it's not always enough. You can also make a carpentry bench and break them down into sticks, but again, it's just another thing you're going to have to grind for on missions where you otherwise wouldn't have to grind at all. So I highly recommend you pick this up first before you go and pick anything up in the regular talent tree. We will cover solo talents at the end for you guys, but otherwise let's just keep talking about the regular one. Now in the resource tree, there is a lot of useful things we can talk about. Things like yield from felling trees, personally, I think is kind of a waste. I only picked it up because I needed to get down to the wood breakdown, but that's just my personal opinion since there's trees basically everywhere and it's a very easy resource to gather. If you're going to put points into things in here, I'd recommend things like your weight capacity. If you ever mine ore in this game, you're going to have to carry a lot of weight and it's nice to not be overloaded in the first place, therefore it's nice to take it. Otherwise, you can take the carry on talent, which will reduce your over encumbrance penalty. This means you can go and carry as much as you can possibly fit in your inventory. However, the over encumbrance amount will be reduced so you can still walk forward without having to worry too much about it. You'll still be slower, but you won't be as slow as you would be otherwise. Personally, I don't like being over encumbered ever, so I chose to go into the weight capacity option instead. Otherwise, there is some other ones worth mentioning, like yield to mining stone. There's some good ones just in general in this tree. There's more weight capacity down here. This is really up to you guys what you want to take. I would just say look for things related to getting ore, not yield from foraging because it's rarely going to matter, and not yield from felling trees or felling tree damage. Things like falling tree resistance here as an example is basically never going to really matter. I've personally never died to a falling tree, so I don't know why you would bother taking this. If you happen to have a really big problem with it, sure, whatever. Again, this is totally up to you guys. This is just my personal opinions and what is good and what is not. Stone is another example that it's kind of like, you know what? Hey, stone's everywhere. Do I really care if I'm over encumbered because of stone? No, because I can just mine it two inches from my base and then walk it in and then you can drop it off and go on with your day. The only tree related one I'm going to mention is the Seasons Logsman, which is the fact that it makes it so when you chop wood, it is automatically added to your inventory. This just saves you the step of actually picking up the logs, which can be useful. But at the end of the day, we're talking like seconds of time saving at most per mission. So personally, I wouldn't bother with it, but it is an option if that's something you were considering. And the last one I want to mention in here is going to be that the 1% to instantly break minerals or ore deposits. This is very useful if you happen to need like thousands of stone. You can go mine a cave wall until you get it to proc with that 1% chance, and you'll get like two or 3,000 stone 
stone sometimes even more and you can just take it straight back to your base and make all the concrete mix you've ever wanted and anything else that you wanted out of stone it's really nice to have for that but otherwise it really doesn't make a difference for ore deposits it's not going to save you that much time with such a low proc chance so i would save your talent points for other places now moving over here to the exploration tree i want to mention something really quick and that is that move speed in this game is extremely powerful in the meta right now there are two reasons for this. One, it allows you to move away from animals faster to give you more distance so you can keep shooting them with your bow or throw spears at them or whatever it is you happen to be doing. Sometimes you can even outright dodge attacks simply because you had extra move speed. Otherwise, it's really useful because there's just a lot of distance running in this game. You will find yourself running very long distances very often. So this is the second talent I would recommend you try to get is just get the general move speed in exploration. This is probably one of the best talents in the game because you don't need to put points into the tree to get it. You just need to put three points into the dust that talent and boom, you've got an extra 10% move speed. Otherwise, there is some worthwhile things mentioning here. We've got some extra HP over here, which will increase your base health. Extra HP is never something to scoff at. There are plenty of times where you'll get very close to death and you could survive off of 10 to 20 more HP. So if you have the extra points, it's definitely worth considering putting into something like that. You also have more weight capacity down here if you're looking for somewhere to put more weight capacity so you can carry more more stuff just an option it is only 10% though whereas the dense packing tube will give you 20% so this is a better spending of your points however if you aren't far enough down in the tree this is perfectly fine to take instead of that it's really just up to you water food and oxygen consumption personally are not a problem for me I've had very few circumstances where I've ever actually died from that so I would not spend my points in that I mean, you can if you want, if that's something you happen to struggle with, but all you really need to do is bring your water canteen and your oxygen container into each mission with you, and you will have more than enough water and more than enough oxygen for the entire mission if you just fill those up one single time. So personally, like I said, I wouldn't bother about it, and cooking meat is so easy once you start hunting animals, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Over here, we have some interesting ones that have to do with the weather and exposure to different things. The stamina regeneration during a storm does have some potential to be good. Stamina regeneration is another thing we'll talk about more as we go throughout this video, but stamina regeneration can be very powerful simply because of the fact that it allows you to regenerate your stamina quicker between sprints, which allows you to fight more often, or allows you to swing more often, or even just allows you to regenerate your stamina while you're running from one place to the next much quicker and saves you significantly more time. You'll be surprised how much stamina regeneration will actually affect how fast you can get from point A to point B if you actually take the time to go and get stamina regeneration food. So therefore stamina regeneration talents are going to also be powerful. It's just really up to you whether or not you wanna take it or not. Unfortunately, this one is only during a storm. That's why I personally didn't take it because if there's a storm, I usually just hide in caves unless I have full exotic armor. So it's just something worth considering if you have extra points to spend and you just want even more stamina regeneration that you can put into making you go faster on faster missions. So if you're speed running, this might be something worth considering. There is some other stuff down here like exposure resistance. I mean, it's optional. It's not really necessary. Once you get decent armor, it won't matter. So it's kind of whatever. We then have exposure recovery rate. I think this is a total waste of a talent personally. I would never spend my talent points in this because once you're out of the storm, it's going to disappear pretty quick anyways, and an extra 15% speed for three talent points just isn't worth it. You do have things like swim speed here, but swimming basically never happens in this game unless you're going and hunting down fish, but then you can just shoot them with the bow or throw a spear at them. So I don't really see a point in the talent. You also have minus 10% oxygen consumed by swimming, but again, you're not usually swimming very often, so not really useful. However, I do want to mention the Night Owl one. The Night Owl talent will give you movement speed at night, which if you do go far enough down this tree is actually a talent worth taking. If you're trying to speed run or you get caught out at night and you don't have a bedroll and a place to sleep, this is a good way just to get yourself back that little bit faster or be able to outrun wolves when you can't see them in the dark. Every bit of move speed is always going to be a good thing to take, excluding swimming speed, of course. 
The only move speed I would actually encourage you not to take is going to be cutting it close. Unless you're doing a lot of hardcore missions, you will basically never run out of time to where you only have 15 minutes left on a mission. If this was the last hour or something, it might be a little more useful, but at this stage with 15 minutes, it's just not enough to be worth going all the way down in this talent tree to take. I wouldn't even spend the one point on it, to be honest, because I have yet to ever get down to the last 15 minutes of a mission. So personally, again, I just would not take it whatsoever. Now, I do want to mention these ones down here. If you do go all the way down in the tree, there are some pretty powerful ones at the bottom of exploration. The first one is makes the dream work. And this is just increases your shared XP with your party members by 15%. Just nice to have if you're playing with friends. It's free XP. Hey, why not take it? Otherwise, we have Desert Master, we have Arctic Master, and we have Forest Master. Each of these is going to give you 5% extra move speed while in each of the three different biomes that are currently in the game. They also will either give you some resistance to that biome's weather systems, or will give you some extra health regeneration, or will just reduce your water consumption, which are all great and all, but we really would only be taking these for the extra 5% move speed while in each zone. Again, these are by no means necessary. They're just very far down in the tree, so it's up to you if you want to spend the points to get down there or not. Moving on, let's go over the hunting tree. I'm going to start picking up the pace a bit because we don't want this video to be an hour long. So we have a few things we want to mention. First is Bone Collector. I only personally took this because it gives you 15% yield from creature bones, which is going to let you make more bone arrows more quickly. So it's nice to have when you're trying to do fast missions and you don't want to spend a lot of time going out of your way to go collect bones simply to make better arrows to kill a monster or a boss or deal with wolves in the Arctic or whatever it may happen to be. I like it. It's by no means necessary and it's not that powerful it's just a personal preference otherwise crouch speed movement is nice if you like to sneak around things like polar bears and you're doing those missions it's great to have but again is not necessary whatsoever otherwise a few more quick notable ones this one up here will give you extra total stamina but not stamina regeneration which personally i would rather have stamina regeneration but it's an option if it's something you want it's still nice to have there's not a lot of things that give you max stamina in the game right now so it's just another thing you can take other than that you have things like quick getaway which will trigger five seconds of increased stamina regeneration when damage again just another stamina regeneration thing it helps if you happen to get attacked and you run out of stamina but again it's really not necessary now i do want to mention these ones because these ones are pretty good and these are the sense small animals and sense medium animals the large animals are so easy to see anyways that i really wouldn't care so i would just tell you to stay away from it but the medium and small animals can actually be pretty hard to spot when you're in some zones it's nice because when you zoom in you get to actually see them highlight if they're within a certain range so it's easier to find and target them again by no means necessary it is just one that i think is maybe worth your time to go and get considering you don't need to have a certain rank to get to them otherwise the only ones i'm going to tell you to avoid are the blueprint for the ghillie armor and the blueprint for the polar bear armor this is just because they're simply not worth it right now i hate to say it but it's the reality of it as soon as you get exotic armor you'll never touch these again so it's just my personal personal preference to completely avoid them. Otherwise, there are plenty of things that are somewhat useful in here, but at the end of the day, they're going to be totally up to you whether or not you want to get them. Now, the cooking and farming tree will be very quick and easy. The only ones that I personally think are super useful in this tree are going to be the planted crops grow faster. The fact that crops will not decay when they're in a crop plot and the plus one space in your stomach. There is plenty of other useful stuff in here. And again, I'm not trying to tell you what to take. Take what you think is best, but crop growth speed can be nice if you care about farming. Crops not decaying is very useful, but it requires you to have like 12 points in the tree before you can even unlock it, or I think it's eight. But either way, it's a lot. And personally, it's not enough for me to be willing to spend that many points to get this one thing that will make it so that crops don't decay when growing. Until farming becomes more important, this talent is to stay away from in my personal opinion, but it can be useful if you're going down the farming tree for whatever reason. Otherwise, the food pyramid is nice, which will give you that extra space in your stomach to have four food buffs instead of three. Now, repairing is going to have plus 30% stamina regeneration if you put all three talents into it. This is a great talent. You don't need to have any prerequisites to get it, so I highly recommend you take it. Again, totally up to you. This isn't a top priority, but it's a pretty high priority. This is one of the new talents implemented into the game with the new update, which you can check out our video if you haven't seen yet where we talk about all these things. However, it is a still very good talent, so I do recommend 
recommend it, but you do not have to take it again by any means. Stamina regeneration is just nice to have, but considering there's no requirement like holding a fire whacker in your hand, it's nice because it's just more stamina regeneration you otherwise wouldn't have. Otherwise, I'm going to be honest with you, I would tell you just to stay away from this tree in general, aside from that one talent, unless you're going for one of two different things. You can pick up first responder because it'll give you 10% move speed with a fire whacker. We're going to talk about the other options you have instead of that here in just a minute when we get to the combat section. But otherwise, you do also have whacker endurance, which will give you 30% stamina regeneration with a fire whacker equipped. If you're trying to speed run missions at optimal speed, Theoretically, it would be best to go ahead and take a first responder to give you that 10% move speed, and then go ahead and spend two more talent points to get 30% stamina regeneration whenever one's in your hand. Just these six points alone gives you 60% regeneration and 10% move speed whenever you're holding a fire whacker. You can just hold one in your hand, pull out a weapon when you need it, problem solved. It's very worth considering, but it is up to you if that's how you want to play the game. That is a speed running build. It is not necessary though. Otherwise, things we have down here, Water Bomb and Repair Bench are honestly just not useful enough at this point to be worth taking. They do have their uses. Personally, I don't like them. I don't think they're worth your time, but that's just me. I don't know why you'd care really that much about throwing your Fire Whacker. To be honest, I haven't actually used this one. So if you guys think it's really good and I'm just being stupid, let me know. But as far as I would imagine, I do not see a good reason to even bother throwing my Fire Whacker. So, hey, it's there if you want it. Now let's move into the tools tree. I'm gonna to be straight with you guys. I would probably tell you, just don't go into the tools tree. There are some worthwhile considerations in here, but not very good considerations. Like resource costs for crafted pickaxes is going to be absolutely worthless as soon as you get a good exotic pickaxe. Yes, you will occasionally still need to craft a steel pick, but it's not very common once you have a good one. Same with axes, same with all the other tools in the game. The wear rate is just not enough of a reduction to warrant three talent points at this stage, unless we're going to be on missions for significantly longer. So therefore, I would just say stay away from it. You're not really going to be fighting with pickaxes or axes, so attack speed and melee damage really don't matter that much. Again, these are all my personal preferences. I'm going to keep saying that throughout the video, but just saying they really aren't that important. All the attack speed will do is make it so you can gather a tiny bit faster, but again, it's not enough to personally say that it's worth talenting into. The worthwhile mentioned ones in here are going to be the Tomahawk talent, which will allow you to throw an axe. However, it's going to cost a lot to get down here, so keep that in mind. And the Oh Wait, I Need That, which will allow you to highlight an axe when it is thrown if you happen to miss and you can't find it which will probably happen a lot there's also another one worth mentioning which is big pick which will give you a bigger mining radius but again this is completely optional and i would personally say it's not worth the talent points it takes to get down to it Already moving into the building section, there is really only a few worthwhile considerations here, and that is going to be your extra space talent, which we're only taking one of because it gives us three extra storage slots and we need it to get down to stocking the flames. Stocking the flames will increase a furnace's smelt rate by 15%, or if you only put one talent point into it, 10%. It's just worth considering. It's not amazing, it's not absolutely necessary, but since you do a lot of smelting in this game, it is something just worth considering if you have extra talent points. Otherwise, the only other one I really want to mention here is going to be the Fortified Rod. The reason this is good is because you don't really have to worry about ever making stone bases if you're able to craft a 500% increased maximum durability crafted lightning rod for half the cost. That means it's five copper bars to absorb six lightning strikes. That's a lot cheaper than one lightning rod at 10 copper bars to absorb one lightning strike. However, you can completely ignore lightning strikes by simply building stone structures. So this one is again, very optional, but it is probably one of the most useful individual talents if you're trying to do speed runs where you happen to need to build a wood base and there is a storm in the area. Again, totally optional talent, but it is one worth considering. Alrighty, let's move over here to the combat section. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. 
the spears and blades tree and the bow tree are completely all optional to your preference of weapon. Some people really like spears, some really like knives, and others really like bows. I think the majority of people do lean towards the bow area, but there seems to be a lot in these two sections too, so I don't wanna say that and piss anybody off. Just know that at the end of the day, whichever weapon you like the most, you can go down that weapon tree. The only one I would tell you not to bother with and that I personally already regret is going down the firearms tree. The firearms tree does have some useful things in it. However, I'm just going to give you some examples as to why it's not worth it. Let's look at this right here. Minus 25% crafted shotgun ammo resource cost. That's great. Shotguns are terrible right now. They do basically no damage, so I personally don't even bother using them. It's just worth saying that, you know, at the end of the day, the shotgun needs a buff, and until it gets it, it's not worth even crafting ammo for. The only ones I would consider are the rifle ammo cost, which will reduce the cost of all your rifle ammo by 25%. You have reload speed with rifles, which is kind of nice for bolt actions, but I don't think it makes enough of a difference to warrant three talent points, to be honest. Then you have damage with rifles, which again, we don't even use rifles that often. Most missions you just do with a bow, knife, or a spear, so it's really not necessary at this point, which is just why this entire tree is kind of worthless. The only one I would even consider, aside from all of those that would be worth your time, is going to be the chance to craft double ammo. The reason this is good is because it just gives you a free chance if you happen to need to make a bunch of rifle ammo. I know there's a couple missions that require that, and there's a couple missions where you're gonna get high enough up that you might craft a gun anyway, or you might want to use it on a boss and it's nice to have the chance to just double craft free ammo again totally optional it's really up to you it's not necessary now I'm gonna group all three of these other sections together, which is bows, spears, and blades. We're gonna kind of go over them and just apply what I'm saying to each one based on your personal preferences and what you like, of course, but just know they all kind of intertwine together. Now, aside from the spears tree, they all have some movement-oriented option. If you do choose to go spears, I recommend you go back to your construction tab, go over and pick up the firewhacker plus 10% move speed because otherwise you just won't have the option unless you go ahead and get the exact exotic spear that gives you the 10% move speed that is an option for you but until you have that it's just one extra point over here to get that 10% move speed so you can just carry a fire whacker around and you'll get that extra 10% that you otherwise wouldn't have in the bow and blade tree now again we're going to have the 10% move speed that will be in both blades and bows and we have a few other things that we want to consider the only one i'm telling you right away you absolutely should take is going to be the bow agility or it's going to be the running with knives and again that's just because it's 10% move speed move speed is king in this game it's 99% of the time the most valuable talents so just keep that in mind with that being said let's start working through the bow tree a little bit and we'll make some comparisons to the other ones over here we have increased damage yes both of the other trees have this as well increased damage is always a good thing for your main source of damage output again I like bows the most so that's why we're talking about the bow tree and using it as an example anything that gives you more more damage is going to be a good option to take there's no negatives to it as long as you're using that weapon type i don't use spears i barely use blades so i might as well put my points into the bow tree where i'm going to be using that weapon i'm not going to put points over here into the melee tree and put points into attack speed with knives when i'm not even really using them just another 10 percent damage over here we've got things like plus 15 percent max durability to crafted bows and crossbows going to be honest really not that big a deal i only took it because it's an easier way to get to these talents down here than going through this tree on the right hand side aim speed is really not that important for any of the weapons to be completely honest with you so i would just stay away from it you have wear rate which again is not going to be relevant for most of these weapons so i'd stay away from it now for the bows you have things like reload speed if you're using crossbows i guess could warrant it but otherwise i would just stick away from it you've got arrow speed really doesn't matter if you're doing stealth kills so i'd stay away from it you've got accuracy which the bows are already pretty darn accurate i don't know when i would use this when i would need the accuracy so if maybe somebody knows what they're talking about here i don't understand the mechanic properly but personally i've never had an issue with accuracy at all they always hit the same spot on my screen so hey if you want to take it take it i just 
don't really even honestly know what it does. At this point, it seems like it does almost nothing. That's just my personal experience. Now, the one I want to talk about in the bow tree that's different from the rest is Crafty Fletcher. This is just going to give you a 10% chance to craft an additional arrow or a bolt. It's a great thing to have, by no means necessary, but it is very useful considering you're crafting arrows literally all the time if you're using a bow. So it's just a nice option to have. Resource cost for crafted bows and crossbows, minus 25%. Honestly, not worth taking. It's a very bad talent because you never craft the high tier bows anyways. So it's just not worth bothering with when you could just craft like five wooden bows in about the same amount of time that it would take you to craft two or three. So spending the extra 10 seconds is a lot easier than spending a whole talent point on this. Crit damage for all of these sections are always going to be a good thing. Right here we have a chance to slow targets on hit with bows and crossbows. That is nice to have, but again, it's not necessary. I'm only taking it to get enough talent points to get down here to the really good ones. We have twice the fun, which gives you a chance to fire two arrows. This is a bow specific thing. It's a very useful talent when going up against big monsters and occasionally will allow you to one shot things you otherwise wouldn't one shot. But to be honest with you, it's really not that important. I find it bugs out pretty often. But hey, if you want to take it, take it. It's not bad by any means. Once again, we have more crit damage, which is always good. And then we have a 5% chance to immobilize on hit with bows and crossbows. Immobilizing an enemy is great. However, this is such a low chance and it only immobilizes them for a couple of seconds. So personally, I would be honest and just say, don't even bother with the talent. I would save your talent point and put it somewhere else. Over here, you've got a chance for arrows to find targets more easily. This is the one that makes the bow tree so powerful. This is why I say people should go bow tree. This makes it so your arrows basically lock onto targets and you don't even have to aim it. It's so easy to take out animals and big packs of wolves when you don't have to aim. You just aim in their general direction, do a 360 no scope and boom, they're dead. It's just amazing. This is great for stealth kills as well as good for just any other thing in general. And I think this is what sets bows apart from the spears and blades section. Again, personal opinion. You do not have to agree with me here. This is just my recommendation that you guys take this because it's extremely, extremely useful. The only downside to this talent is if like a little bunny happens to hop in front of your screen and you're aiming at a deer that's behind the little bunny, it's going to lock onto the little bunny. So it's just something worth considering. But again, I'd highly, highly recommend this talent. I think this is honestly the best talent in the entire game, in my personal opinion, other than move speed talents. Lastly, we have chance to wound on hit. I'm going to be honest with you. These are usually worthless unless you're using knives or spears. In the bow tree, they're only used on big targets because we're one-shotting things the whole time anyways. The spear tree is also one-shotting things all the time. The knife tree can even one-shot things all the time. So again, they're really only going to be used on big opponents. And if you're in the melee tree, it's going to be hard to melee some of those larger animals. So just keep that ready when you're considering taking this talent or not. I would honestly say just don't take any of the wound on hit talents, but that's again, just a personal preference. Lastly, we have projectile damage of a crafted bow. This is great if you don't bring in your exotic. If you do bring in your exotic bow, it's worthless. So, hey, it's up to you. I would say it might be worth taking early on and then respecking. But if you're taking in an exotic bow, then there is absolutely no point in taking this with you. Now, a lot of what I just said here is going to apply to the spears and blades tree. So just take that into consideration. Obviously, some things may differ and you may prefer different talents. So do feel free to do that as well. Wear rate and things like that are going to be the one thing I'll tell you to always stay away from. It's very rarely going to matter or be useful. So that's just the one thing I'll say. Otherwise, the only thing I'm going to say is critical damage for spears is very useful because you're going to be throwing it into their face a lot, which is how you're going to get a lot of your damage. So just something worth considering when taking spears. Moving over to blades, there's a few other things. We really just want raw damage with these since you're swinging so fast. Crit damage is always good too, since when animals are running at you, they're going to be running towards you with their head. It's worth having extra crit damage on it as well. The blades tree has a lot of very useful ones. Just stay away from things like resource costs for crafted ones, because you're going to get an exotic knife pretty early on, and it's going to do way more damage than the other ones will. So it's just easier to take that unless you happen to be crafting all the way up to steel knives pretty often i would just tell you go ahead and just don't bother with any of these talents that have to do with resource crafting cost excluding 
the extra arrows you get in the bow tree. The one talent I do want to mention in the knife tree is going to be this one down here, which is killer throw. It gives you a chance to instantly kill any non boss target, so keep that in mind, with a thrown knife by 5%. I've seen players do this method where they just get a bunch of knives like stone knives and then just start spam throwing them at people, but ever since they put in the whole charge up to throw thing, it's not as good. You can still use it. It's useful for things like mammoths or elephants or bears even, things like that, but again, it's my personal opinion. I would still probably just not take it, but I'll leave that entirely up to you guys and your opinions on whether or not you want to choose these kinds of talents for the knife tree and to close the combat tree i'm just going to say this one more time i recommend staying entirely away from the firearms tree except for the rifle reduction ammo cost or maybe maybe the pistol reduction ammo cost that would be the only ones i'd really bother with otherwise go ahead and choose your primary weapon which is either going to be blade spears or bow and go down whichever tree you like if you want my personal opinion on which is best i'd say bow but people have different opinions and that's perfectly fine now let's move into the solo tree and wrap this thing up. Now your solo tree, I'm gonna be honest with you, has a lot of very powerful talents. And if you are playing solo, this is gonna be obviously much more useful to you than if you're not. Because if you're not playing solo, then you won't get any of the benefit from any of your solo talents. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these. The first one we wanna get is our move speed. Move speed's always good. We've also got extra max stamina over here and stamina regeneration. Those are always good to have. We've got extra HP. We've got extra health regeneration, that's passive. We've got an extra 10% melee damage, damage with bows and reload speed. We've also got damage with knives and thrown knives. And then you've also got the fact that you can see creatures alert level and health, which is very nice to have as well when you're playing in solo. We're gonna ignore the firearms one because like we said, we don't use those very often. We've got the spear one over here, which will give you extra spear damage and spear damage with thrown spears which is significantly useful for spears considering you're throwing them all the time we've also got things like these ones over here which will just give you reduced food and water and oxygen consumption it just saves you time absolutely not necessary just something i like to take personally you've got things like yield from basically everything this is a great talent to have 15 percent more everything except for skinning so i recommend you take it when you get down to that talent you also have this over here which is going to give you 25 percent and then 50 percent yield from creature bones and creature meat. Like I said, as a archer, I use bones a lot, so it's really nice to have. If you're not using bones a lot, I would not worry about the meat because there are very few missions where you need a ton of meat anyways. I would say stay away from the skinning one and stay away from the harvesting one because 10% foraging really usually doesn't matter, and an extra 50% leather usually doesn't matter either. I rarely run into circumstances where I don't have enough leather for basically any reason. Otherwise, the other ones we want to talk about is Lone Wolf because it gives you 15% XP gain, which is always a good thing to have is more XP. And we want to talk about the weight capacity, which is pack horse right here. It's always good to have extra weight capacity. And then we can move down to mobile stockpile, which just makes it so everything you're carrying has 20% less weight. There's no con to that, so why not take it? If you're struggling with polar bears, I do want to mention the very, very quiet talent, only because it gives you a minus 15% perceived threat while you're stealthed. However, again, it is a totally non-necessary talent. I personally don't use it because I don't struggle with them, but that's just my experience. Once you learn how to ole bears, they're not too much of an issue. Otherwise, you have things like yield from felling trees and yield from mining. Again, totally optional. The mining one would probably be better in my personal opinion, but you can take these or avoid these as much as you want. The solo tree is very optional as to what you take. The only things I'm going to tell you that are absolute must haves as soon as you can are gonna be your move speed, gonna be your melee damage, your main weapons damage, whichever main weapon you're choosing to use, are gonna be your maximum health and health regeneration, your stamina and stamina regeneration, your yield from basically everything, and your overall weight capacity and weight carry weight reductions, as well as your XP gain. There's a lot of good ones in here, but to be honest, there's just too many really, really good ones to go and spend talents on things that we don't absolutely need. You could even take one or two out from these up here to go put them in things that you may prefer otherwise. However, with all that being said, I am Game Advisor. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's gone on way longer than we expected it to, but hopefully you find some good information in here that will help you decide what is the best talent choice for you. If you have recommendations for players, feel free to comment down below. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you next time.